anyway guys, so I thought I'd bring Blackjean Brasca out into the out and open today um, with the second of my reenactment videos. So you might notice I'm in a slightly strange getup, uh, but this is the uniform uh, that I wear and to represent my, my War Warwickshire impression. So today's video, essentially I'm going to tell you a little bit about the uniform. You'll also notice rather patriotic backing, uh, which is the, the flag and I've also got my, my little icon there as well. Um, you might notice it's a little bit loud out. I'm currently in the back garden of my house. Uh, you will hear children playing football, or what I assume is football, while screaming at the top of their lungs, uh, and also cars going past as well. I hope that shouldn't be, um, disturb us too much. So first thing I'm going to talk to you about is the uniform. Okay, so the uniform we have here is called uh, a battle dress. Uh, so we have battle dress blouse, battle dress trousers. Um, it is made of wool serge, so not very nice, and when it gets wet, it makes you smell like a wet dog. Uh, this is what's called 1940 pattern. Uh, there was also a 1937 pattern, which I'll show a picture of at the end. Um, this one is kind of an economy, economy version. And we also have on uh, 37 pattern webbing, which is uh, essentially the equipment you carry, so it's all made of this rather bizarre canvas. Um, so that is 37 pattern webbing, we have a belt and we have gaiters and also a pair of ammo boots which are these ones here and they come with studs in the bottom very similar to football boots. Finally you'll notice this misshapen mass on my head, this is called a GS cap or GS beret uh, and that is called general service cap. This is what's called a working, walking out impression uh, and essentially is what you'd wear when you go down the pub. Uh, when you are not in battle equipment and we'll do that in another video as well. So for the modelers out there I'm going to go through a quick sort of walk down as to how we paint this and then for the reenactors amongst you we'll have a chat about exactly where you can get this stuff. Okay guys so model makers amongst you obviously if you're doing British infantry from the Second World War this is the kind of uniform that you'll be painting. So the Paints wise for myself, obviously this looks quite brown green, but I generally just tend to stick with quite a brown colour and leave the green be. Um, there are a number of manufacturers of battle dress, so there's many different types, but generally I stick with Gawthor Brown, and then once that's painted on, I wash it uh, with an Agrax and then bring that back up with a Gawthor and it gives you quite a nice brown shade which will cover the battle dress. The webbing, now the webbing normally is, 37 pattern webbing is normally a, a tan colour, so if you're doing desert, Italy, things like that, Sandra Just is a good bet. However, if you're doing Europe, uh, then you're looking for Strachan Green as a colour, uh, or Castellan, either will work. Again, wash with the ag wraps and highlight it, and that will give you the colour of the webbing. That is because we use something called Blanco KG3. It's essentially a powder paste which we put over the webbing, helps it blend in. Uh, so it's an, a very basic fat form of camouflage. Finally with the boots, Abaddon Black, uh, and if you're, fit, if you're doing guards, I'd recommend certainly shining it because they tend to have quite shiny boots. Okay, so next part of the video guys, we'll go on to the vendors you can get this from and what you'd need to actually get started. Okay guys, so to buy the uniform, you can buy originals. Now this is actually an original uh, 75 year old uniform, uh, or at least the top part is. Um, so that will generally cost you about 100 to 120 pounds depending on what you get. Do be aware anything that has airborne on it or commando will generally cost a lot more and that may well have been stitched on pri uh, prior to selling but not during its time uh, in the services. Uh, the trousers are reproduction or repro. Um, that's generally I find the best place to get um, trousers purely because if you end up wearing them in a uh, reenactment scenario then you may well end up tearing them or damaging them and you don't want to do that to an original. So um, the place I got these from is Soldier of Fortune. I'll put a link at the bottom of the page here. Go and check them out. I would probably dissuade you from buying from them over the internet as their sizes are a bit strange. Uh, however, if you see them at shows, uh, military shows such as Stonely or Malvern, buy from, uh, buy from them there. Uh, I would avoid buying a GS cap from them, however, because they look like some, something that the uh, North Koreans would wear in their spare time. So this is actually an original. Uh, it's had a little bit of mothing, but other than that, quite a nice piece. The cap badge is original. Uh, you can get ones called restrikes, which essentially are ones that have had the edging uh, replaced or the, uh, the rear piece replaced. Uh, to be honest, 
I'm not a perfectionist, as long as it looks the part, um, then generally it'll do fine. Webbing wise is all original. If anybody tries to sell you reproduction British gear, don't bother. You can pick up uh, re uh, real webbing from the 1930s, late 1930s, from 1937 pattern, uh, all the way through to the 1960s dated. So you really don't need to worry too much about dates uh, about it. I think these are 1956, 1952, and 1948. So very easy to find uh, and again I can suggest a couple of places such as Marlwood Stoney Military Affairs to get that equipment so don't pay through the nose for it guys. Ammo boots um, are absolutely fine to get hold of normally uh, you want to make sure that they've got the toe and the heel correct on them um, if you're doing indoor shows I would certainly recommend getting some DMS boots uh, they are rubber soled ones if you end up buying ammo boots and walking around inside you will fall over because it's like walking around on concrete with football boots you've got no grip whatsoever so we've got the boots we've got the gaiters we've got the trousers uh, we've got the belt the blouse the cap also got a scrim scarf in here as well so it's essentially a form of camouflage you can use this to uh, drape this over your head if you're looking over a ridge line to try and blend in snipers have been seen to use it as well but generally it's worn around the neck what I'm going to do now is cut away and uh, we're going to show you what is done as the shirt sleeve order. Hey guys, so this is shirt sleeve order. So this is essentially what you'd wear if it was A, roasting hot, or B, you had heavy duty work to do. So you'd often see a lot of the artillery crews wearing uh, essentially what I am now. So this is your wool undershirt. Now you have this under the battle dress anyway. Um, it is, again, very warm wool serge, so you, you, know, you do get very hot in this uniform. Uh, and the sleeves rolled up, but other than that, very much the same. Got the braces there. Now these are elasticated ones. Uh, however, normally you would wear the white cloth in elasticated ones. However, these are a little bit more comfortable. Uh, got your dog tag as well, which is made of canvas. So I am five nine five seven two nine eight seven seven Private Thatcher, um, Bren Gunner of War Warwickshire Regiment. So that is your serial number on there as well, along with your initials and your religion on there as well. So uh, you can buy these from Soldier of Fortune and then Tim's Tags in the UK do uh, a good service of getting these stamped up to the correct style. So all you've got to do is provide the number uh, and some of the details on there and they'll stamp them up for you. So that is, uh, I'll bring you one last uh, section on the 37 pattern battle dress, which uh, I mentioned earlier, but otherwise I will see you guys later. Thank you very much for watching. Hey guys, so I thought after doing the shirt sleeve one I, I should show you the uh, other battle dress that I mentioned in the first video. So this is the 37 pattern blouse. Now it's still the same trousers and they are both from Soldier of Fortune going back to the vendors. So colour wise you can see the difference but it's no real big issue there at all. Uh, you can see that there is a little bit more in the way of uh, finery on this one so the buttons are covered. Um, and I'm done, which is a very sloppy of myself, but never mind. Um, and it's just, it's generally a lot smoother, a lot nicer to wear than uh, the original. Uh, it's a little bit softer on the skin. Also, uh, I forgot to mention in my last video, you've got your details down the sleeve here. Now, I portray the Royal Warwickshire Regiment, which is here. That's called a uh, shoulder title or a rocker. Then we have the divisional badge, which in this case is third division, uh, which landed on D Day. So, and then below that, we have the oh, what are they called service stripes that's the one so in each brigade uh, so there's three infantry brigades per division plus extras uh, plus uh, support in, um, brigades things like that so in this case there are three regiments per brigade and we are the th so the Royal Warwick I should say are the third regiment in the 185 brigade section of the third division if you're with me so far so if you were the first regiment, you'd have one stripe. If you were second, two, and so on and so forth. So we are the junior regiment, I believe the term is. So that's a little bit about the insignia there. Um, and I'll bring you some stills at the end of this video.